focused on staying ahead in difficult times. That's why as we navigate the challenges of the business world, the ability to adapt, innovate, and thrive in difficult time has become a true testament to our resilience as well. Our next session promises to provide valuable insights on this very topic. Allow us to introduce the distinguished Mr. Harkirat Bedi, and he is an esteemed professional in the FMCG industry with over 24 years of experience and an impressive 21 years dedicated to the esteemed DABA group. Mr. Bedi's journey spans diverse product categories and global regions. His expertise has left an indelible mark on FMCG landscape, having excelled in pivotal roles encompassing sales, marketing, business development, and international business. His footprint extends across India, South Asia, and Southeast Asia. A true testament to his excellence, Mr. Bedi has earned the honor of being recognized as commercially important person not just once, but twice by the Ministry of Commerce. Please join me in welcoming our keynote speaker, Mr. Harkirat Bedi, Business Head, Sark Business, Dabur Nepal Private Limited, on the session, Staying Ahead in Difficult Times. A huge round of applause for him, please. Uh, good morning to all of you. Yeah. Uh, at the outset, uh, I would like to thank Mohan Oja ji and uh, Growth Sellers for giving me an opportunity to speak uh, at this very important sales summit. Uh, very grateful, very honored, very humbled uh, for this initiative of yours. Uh, before I start, I just uh, would like to just give a brief uh, idea about myself. Uh, I worked, I started working in Nepal from 2007. I've held various roles in Nepal and India. And I'm largely, I started my career in sales. So I think uh, I would relate to most of you in this room and most of you would relate to me. Uh, as we go forward, uh, the topic that I was given was staying ahead in difficult times. And uh, as sales professionals, I think we have all seen some pretty difficult times. And through my shared sales experience, my Nepal perspective, and having worked during difficult situations, I'll make an endeavor to present a few strategies, a kind of a template to navigate these uh, tough and turbulent times. So. Okay, just. The slide, uh, yeah. So we all know what, uh, what difficult means. I think uh, everyone is aware of the pure dictionary meaning. But in a business perspective, what does difficult mean? And in a Nepal perspective, what does difficult mean? I think uh, one would be insurgency would be a difficult period. Natural disasters, I think uh, a lot of us have worked through the earthquake. Economic blockade, international conflicts, and recession or periods of low economic growth. So. This presentation, we will essentially focus on how to operate in a recessionary environment, in an environment which is characterized by low economic growth. So all of us are aware that Nepal's economy is facing very, very difficult times. So we have low GDP growth coupled with very, very high inflation, about 7 to 8% inflation. There's a drop in imports. Imports are down by about 16%. So 
in an import dependent economy imports being down basically means there is a sharp consumption slowdown people are consuming less and there is less demand hence lower imports then we go down to government revenues oh sorry just go back we go down to government revenues so if if an economy is dependent on imports that means imports drive revenues so in, because of imports you get customs duty you get vat you get excise duty so imports falls the government revenues falls and lastly what is really scary is fdi is down foreign direct investment is down for an economy to grow at about 6% like nepal you need foreign direct investment to come in local capital mobilization local savings will not be able to help the economy grow at 6% or to 6 to 7% which is very very important if you want to get the workforce jobs and create a important environment for employability so the the picture doesn't look good picture looks pretty rose uh, pretty uh, i would say worrisome so what happens in this kind of environment essentially what happens is a tough environment or a recessionary environment essentially leads to changes in consumer behavior so we have basically two kind of categories for goods and services one we have something called discretionary categories and something called non discretionary categories discretionary categories are essentially your non essential goods and services which would be travel and tvs and laptops high end mobile phones cars and stuff like that so in this kind of environment these categories get pretty badly hit and you see sharp slowdown in sales and you see purchase postponement or basically deferment in uh, purchases and this category these categories get highly impacted now we come to non discretionary categories which is essentially essential goods and services and some and, and basic necessities here we see there is an impact there will be a decline in sales but it's relatively less impacted so what happens in these categories and these are the categories in which uh, dabur operates so this is my area of expertise so i'll i'll deal on this you see greater value seeking so your consumers want price offs your consumers want promotions your consumers are looking for discounts people become more value seeking in tougher times then you see what happens is down trading so people go from main brands to say cheaper brands or people go from branded goods so you buy a, a branded shirt you go to a unbranded say a, a brand a unbranded uh, garments or clothes then you see basically a, a shift in packs so with less money in the pocket of consumers you will see that you know if you wanted to buy a 1 kilo product he might say okay yeah, let me buy something 500 grams or 250 grams so you you move from large packs you move to small packs and what happens in these tough times is people become more and more price conscious so 5 rupees a 10 rupees a 50 rupees 100 rupees price points become very very important so a consumer might say okay give me less grammage give me less millage but keep the price at say 25 rupees or keep the price at say 10 rupees i i am ready to compromise on the size of the product but do not increase the price so this is also very very relevant in these tough times that's why people don't increase prices uh but in fact they might reduce the grammage or if you have 10 biscuits in a pack it might become eight biscuits or if the biscuits you know size is a certain thing it might become smaller so that's what that's how th that's how things happen so so what happens essentially so difficult times create create pressure it creates tremendous pressure on business and how is that first your unit sales comes down your volume sales uh, come down 
as a consequence of that, your revenues come down. Again, because you are selling offers and you are selling your cheaper products, your margins come down. For all of us in sales, we'll understand trade receivables or what do you call debtors or outstandings, they go up because there's tremendous pressure on offtakes. So as a result of it, what happens? Your cash flows get impacted and your working capital gets impacted because sales slow down, your inventory piles up, your money is not coming from the trade, so you have a working capital problem. And you need to pay your creditors, so your working profit comes down. And lastly, all this funnels into a drop of your drop in your profits. And as all commercial entities, and I think all of us probably work in commercial organizations here, commercial organizations are not altruistic. They work for a commercial consideration. They work for profits. So if profits are down, it's a real cause of concern for everybody. So in this kind of a scenario, who feels the impact first? Who gets impacted first? It's the sales professional. It's the sales function. So the first impact of this tough environment or difficult times is faced by the sales professional. He is the first touch point who feels the pain. However, I think all of us have worked in very, very tough times. And Sometimes things are not as bad as they seem, and sometimes things are not as difficult as they, they seem. So however, it's not all gloom and doom. We have to understand that we have to operate in these environments and do the best we can. So what I want to say is we can navigate these turbulent waters, and most businesses in Nepal have navigated turbulent waters, have seen tough times. So what I want to say is, uh, as sales professionals, we must believe in the first instance that we can come through these tough times. So what should we, as sales leaders, do in these tough times? Firstly, we must recognize that the environment around us has changed. In a completely changed environment, we cannot operate the way we have been operating. The status quo has to change. So what do we need to do? We need to recraft our current sales strategy. And that sales strategy must be meshed in with very strong execution. However, what I want to tell all of you in this room is that execution will not be possible if we do not prepare our teams accordingly. So what do I mean by preparing our teams? I mean we need to inculcate some strong behavioral habits, especially during recessionary and tough times, so that the team can uh, tide over uh, this phase. So what here, I, what I want to say is, as sales leaders in this point of time, we need to keep our teams motivated. We need to have a growth mindset. A growth mindset essentially means a problem-solving mindset, a mindset which challenges the current situation and wants to get out of it. So essentially, something completely opposite of a complaining mindset. So you need to inculcate a growth mindset. You need to build in a certain degree of resilience and perseverance into your team. You have to prepare them for the tough times. Then we move into something called agile. Agile means we should be able to take notice of the in immediate environment and act quickly. You can't spend too much time pondering and thinking. So your teams have to be agile. The environment is changing every day. And again, you need to be adaptive and responsive to the situation around you. So if you, you call, in these times, you have to be constantly on your guard. It's not business as usual. So what I'm trying to say, any degree of strategy, any template, any plan will fail if the execution is not strong. 
and strong execution will only happen if your team is prepared with these behavioral traits or you have to drive these behavioral traits. So when we are talking about recrafting our sales strategy in these tough times, I'm looking at essentially six buckets. One is, how do we look at our product portfolio as a sales professional? What do I, how do I look at my customer, customers, or customer development basically means my channel partners? How do I look at my uh, dealers? How do I look at my retail? How do I look at my wholesale? So how do I look at all my channel partners who help me sell? And how do I even look at my customers? How do I look at costs? Basically, the sales and distribution costs. And then we come down to what can we do in terms of IT, informational technology, as far as the sales force is concerned. The next bucket is KPIs. My KPIs need to change in this environment. So how do I redefine my KPIs to match the current economic realities? And last is, what do, can I do in terms of coaching and mentoring my team in these tough times. So largely, I will just take you through these six buckets and what uh, we can do in each bucket to basically uh, prepare for these uh, turbulent times. So let's start with the product portfolio. So as a sales professional, you really knew, in these times, you really need to look at your product mix. You really need to reassess your product portfolio. So what do I mean by reassessing your product portfolio? You need to optimize your product mix in, this, uh, uh, in these times. What You should know what will sell and what will not sell. And you should prepare accordingly and put your efforts in, the, in those places where you will get the maximum bang for your buck or maximum return on your effort. So in, a, in, your, in your tough times, you will see your value for money brands will sell more. Your value for money packs will sell more. You will see a shift to your low unit packs or your smaller SKUs largely. That's what uh, you will see. Your large packs will not sell as much as your small packs. So your, say, say, take it out of a FMCG thing, your big TVs might not sell as much as the smaller TVs. Or your more expensive mobile phones might not sell as much as your basic mobile phones. And last year, lastly, you must understand that there will be a big run on your consumer offers. So whether it is uh, consumer promotions, price offs, discounts, anything, any of those kind of products that you have, SKUs, there will be a big push on this. So essentially, as a sales professional, you should focus on these four buckets. This is eventually going to drive your sales. But what happens when you sell, when you basically sell this kind of assortment? When you sell this kind of assortment, you will see a margin pressure. So you will have your bosses, you will have finance, you will have everybody saying, Ki, you know, the margin is getting diluted, margin is getting diluted, we are not making enough money. So Somewhere, we as sales professionals also need to don a business hat. We all the time cannot be just looking as being a, just a salesperson and selling. We also need to have a larger perspective, don a business hat, and see that how can I make up this loss in margins? Can I make some effort and sell some high margin products that I have? What can I do? It will be difficult, but can I sell some high margin products? Also, in these tough times, you should always be scanning for any opportunity sales that can happen. Always. Like in Dabur just now with Dengue, we, see, we are seeing a huge opportunity sales in our Odomos packs. So you should, as a sales professional, be able to scan the environment, get early warning signals, see where can I get the opportunity, and then prepare the organization and said, opportunities are coming in space A, B, C. Please produce these products. Please make these ready, readily available so that I can sell. So 
this is how we one can look at your product mix be aware of what will sell and push those SKUs or brands or products accordingly. Next is we are looking at customer development. As far as customer development means, basically means we should support our channel partners, we should support our, our dealers, we should support our wholesalers, and we should support our retailers. But what do we mean by support? Because money is limited, money is a constraint for most organizations. You cannot keep everybody happy. So, so who do we keep happy in these times, or who do we protect in these times? The question is you have to protect the core. I think everybody knows Pareto's principle, 80, 20, 70, 30, whatever you call. 70 to 80 percent of your business comes from 20 to 30 percent of your customers. So in these tough times, I think that 20 or 30 percent of your customers, you have to basically ring fence. You have to basically see that they are supported and protected, and they do not go to the competition. They don't take agencies for the competition, or they do not move towards the competition, or they do not, they sell more of your products and less of the com competition. So you've got to be very, very cognizant of your core customers and how do you protect them? How do you protect them? You give them special offers, you give them extra credit, you help them with channel financing. So they have to get a differentiated offering than what your regular dealers are getting. So they have to feel special in these tough times and they have to feel that yes, the company is looking out for us. Secondly, is the omni-channel presence approach. Whenever things are tough, we just can't be very, very fixated in our thinking of saying, I will only sell in general trade, or I will sell only sell in modern trade. You have to have an omni-channel approach. You, have, you should be able to touch your consumer wherever he shops. And you should have an offering and a way to reach him wherever he is. So if he buys from general trade, you should be available. If he buys from modern trade or department stores, you should be available there. If he likes to sit at home and shop on his laptop or on his mobile phone, you should, have a, you should be there through uh, e-commerce or be present on a website. If he likes to, at least for Dabur with our juices, if he likes to consume off-premises, you should be there at a restaurant or a, or a mall or a nightclub. So, Wherever possible, we should be able to touch the consumer and provide him offerings and a mean to transact at each and every medium. So, also, in challenging times, generally we are so crisis focused that we are, uh, you know, only seeing how can we just go through this week, next month, this quarter. So we are very, very focused on crisis that somewhere we forget that this is a good time to keep my infra ready for the future. So during tough times also we should ensure that how can I strengthen my infrastructure for future readiness. Can I, can I improve my distributor base? Can I increase more dealers? Can I go to more outlets? Can I make my products? Uh, can I drive width of distribution? Can I drive numeric distribution? So how can I, in this period, set my infrastructure ready so when the good times come, I'm ready to take maximum advantage and maximum opportunity. So this is a good time to strengthen my infrastructure, whether it is my distribution infrastructure or whether it is my sales infrastructure. That is the sales force and everything. So now, the next bucket we should address during these times is costs. As far as costs are concerned, now is the time basically to move to a ROI decision making. For us sales leaders, when we allot money for any sales activity, we should ask ourselves what is the return on investment going to be. In normal times, we generally don't. 
because everything is hunky dory sales are happening profits are coming management is happy everybody is happy but you have to understand during tough times your finance department is going to be very tight your boss won't be able to spare budget so how do i how do i manage in these tough times so every decision in your in as far as your sales and distribution costs are concerned any initiative should be backed by a very strong return on investment if the roi is not strong enough you should not even touch it you should just drop it second thing is what we need to do in these tough times is something called zero based budgeting zero based budgeting means is is the opposite of incremental budgeting suppose we have a cost any cost say van expense or something or any distribution cost normally how do we budget okay this year it was 10 rupees next year i make i'll take a 10% increase it will be 11 rupees so that's how normally we budget incremental budget but in tough times we need to do zero based budgeting we have to ask ourselves is this cost required in the first place or not if last year i spent 10 rupees can i spend zero or can i spend two do we have to question each and every cost not get into incremental mode okay last year i spent 100 rupees i'll budget 110 rupees this year no we have to ask ourselves do we really require this cost in the first place can we do without it so that is zero based budgeting so that's what we need to look at and the third thing is if you want to uh, save costs in this period or be very cognizant of your spending you need to have very strong cross functional alignment the first warning signal of a slowdown or a pressure cooker situation is with sales so the it's the duty of the sales leader or the sales professional or the sales officer rsm asm anybody it is his his duty to circle back to the organization and tell them that there is a slowdown coming so please carefully let us plan our raw material procurement let us carefully plan our uh, our packaging material procurement let us plan our production accordingly if there is a slowdown we need to inform the supply chain that there is a slowdown we need to in inform the operations head there is a slowdown otherwise you have a slowdown and lots of rm is coming lots of packaging material is coming the factory is just producing and you have a massive working capital issue so number 1 number 2 you need to completely align your finance that there is a slow down goods are not selling the, what will this lead to collections from the market are going to be poor collections are going to be slow so your finance guy needs to know that he needs to know that the flow of money is not going to be like usual so as a result he can prepare himself also so it's our duty as sales professionals to align all the other functions and tell them there is a slow down coming please plan accordingly if you do this in time you will save demurrage cost you will save inventory carrying cost and you will save all sorts of other related costs next we go into uh, sales it again we need as most organizations we need to invest in sales automation why do we need to invest in sales automation it is because we need sales it enablement for greater data visibility here data visibility means greater real time data visibility the the quicker you get data the more actionable it is if i get data after 7 days if i get data after 15 days all i'm all i'm going to do is a post facto post mortem of the data nothing else but if i get quicker data if i get real time data then i can take quicker decisions it's more actionable and it's more relevant to the situation and to the organization so again when we talk about uh, at least from a fmcg perspective uh, when you talk about uh, automation we are talking about distribution management systems we are talking about sfas uh, in the market 
So this, this becomes very, very relevant uh, in the current context. So how does this help? First, it will help you in your go-to-market model. So basically, greater data visibility will tell you which are the outlets you should concentrate, which are the SKUs you should look at. So it gives you a much sharper focus. So you're not wasting time addressing those outlets where you will not get any uh, traction, and you're not wasting uh, time on SKUs that will not sell. So this, it, it, it gives a lot of, um, uh, I think, uh, headway for the sales team. Again, this helps you to standardize, standardize and streamline the process. Sales process, take out those processes which are not adding value to you, and only stick with processes which, are, which add value to you. This will also, with uh, your SFAs and uh, DMS, it gives you a fair idea on what is selling so you can really improve your sales forecasting in and out. So you've got a good idea of what you need to order from the company, and you get a very, very good idea of what is selling on the retail shelves. And lastly, uh, as we all sales professionals know, that data analysis, data understanding becomes all the more important in tough times because you're always looking at some correlations, some threads, something to tell you that, you know, how to go forward. In good times, you do really don't need to even worry about that level of analysis. But when tough time comes, the team has to track and analyze data at different cuts, you know, you, by geography, by SKU, by brand, by outlet, by channel. So you need to keep on having different, different data cuts to be able to understand where should I focus in these tough times. So this is very, very important. Next, uh, we move to the sales KPIs. So I think everybody knows what KPIs are, key performance uh, indices. KPIs in a, in, a, in a normal time will be different. KPIs in, a, in, a tough, in tough times, recessionary times are com going to be completely different. So you've got to redefine your KPIs, keeping in mind what is the situation on the ground. So as sales leaders, we need to redefine the KPIs of the entire sales team to basically reflect the realities on the ground. So here, when we talk about organizational DNA and philosophy, We've got to understand our organization's DNA and philosophy. This address that. What is the core philosophy? Is it volume growth? Is it value growth? Is it high margins? Is it um, a certain product portfolio? What is it? Then we come into the current business priorities. Business priorities change during these times, so your KPI should basically reflect current business priorities. Current business priorities might be, collection might be a priority, receivables from trade might be a priority, you know? So what are the current business priorities? You might say, no, in this tough time, I want to just drive volume, I want to sell more units. So whatever your current business priority should get meshed into your KPIs. And last thing is, you should not allow the business to deteriorate or erode through dilution of brand hygiene. Your brand, your business hygiene. Your business hygiene should not get screwed in these times because if that happens, when the good time comes, you will not be able to take advantage of that. So when I talk about business hygiene, what do I talk about? I talk about inventory. Inventory pileup should not happen at the stock points. Then, I, then what do we talk about? We talk about inventory aging, especially in products like foods, juices. You cannot ha allow your products to age because products aging will basically lead to damages. It will lead to expiries. It will have a huge cost on your company. And third, when we talk about hygiene, we talk about outstandings. If you allow your outstandings, if you allow your collections to deteriorate, you will be getting into bad debts, you will get into litigation, you will get into uh, 
court cases which will again create mess for you in terms of cost so be cognizant of your organizational dna philosophy please tell the sales guy what do you want what do you want as an organization he should be very clear secondly the current business priorities should be handled current business priorities might be i want to should go so he should be very very clear on what is the current business priorities and last is business hygiene or what we call means to business should be clearly uh, i think highlighted and should be clearly focused means to business is as important as doing business your means how do you do business is as important as achieving business results so business hygiene becomes very important outstanding should not go up inventory should not start piling up and stocks should not get aged because you will be then forced to give liquidation office offers you will be forced to uh, you know give one plus one and that will create huge costs on your organization and lastly during tough times the role of coaching and mentoring becomes all the more important and here let me just take you through what we what do we say in terms of coaching and mentoring so you have to essentially create a safe and supportive environment there will be pressure but as a leader you need to create a safe and supportive environment for your team if you don't do that your team will not get back to you with problems on the ground they will start hiding facts they will start hiding data they will start hiding issues because the first thing they will understand is if i tell this to my boss he is only going to shout at me or he is going to take some punitive action or measure so if you are able to create a safe and supportive environment you will get to know from the ground level up what is the situation so that is becomes very important and you'll really get to know what is the thing if your team hides data uh, if your team hides data if your team hides facts and if your team is not open and transparent about what is happening you will never be able to come up with solutions or you will never be able to tailor make any solutions uh, to help them so it will be garbage in garbage out next is empowerment and accountability in these turbulent and tough times decisions have to be taken on the spot so you have to empower your your teams if you can if you have a very rigid command and control structure where every approval for every small thing needs to be taken your teams are not going to be able to take action quickly they need to be sufficiently empowered so that they can take action if they are sitting at a dealer point they are if they should have that empowerment to take action if all the time they have to ring up their boss their boss will ring up his boss his boss will ring up his boss if you have a very very slow uh, communication system and you have a very strict command and control kind of a structure you will not be able to be agile enough in these in this in these times you will be inflexible and you will pay for it so empower your team and make them accountable say i'm giving you special enough enough power i'm giving you enough uh, leeway but you need to be accountable you need to be responsible and you need to deliver to the best of your abilities then we go to the third part which is foster learning from shared experiences here again in a sales team there has to be greater connect there has to be greater communication within the team lots of companies use whatsapp uh, viber different platforms for the sales team to communicate here the question is one person can share with the other what has gone well in his geography how he has managed the situation these shared learnings help the team sales officer a can say what did he do well how he succeeded sales officer b can tell his strategy so that there, there is a pool of uh, knowledge and a pool of resource and we have shared experiences here also what i would like to say that everybody's team has um, some senior people some junior people senior people would have seen tougher times junior people would not have seen so we need to pick the brains of the senior people and we need to tell them 
that you know please share you, how you operated in very very difficult and tough times please share it with the rest of the team and uh, also motivate them and tell them that they can come through these difficult times so that also your senior resources will be a, will play a key role in this lastly upskilling and this is a good time to upskill and reskill your your teams uh, because it's a changing uh, environment so this is a good time to do that and lastly uh, what we are saying is constructive feedback so here again the thing is um, you know a lot of times we as sales professionals uh, always say uh, you know don't bring problems to us bring solutions so i think that approach does not work uh, we have to jointly address the, the problems and solutions with our team i don't think the teams can just bring the solutions and also we need to give them feedback in these times but that has to be constructive feedback constructive means we have to give them pointers on how they can improve their performance rather than just telling them ye nahi ho raha wo nahi ho raha ye you know that kind of a thing so it's got to be okay you're not able to deliver on these uh, kpis this is how this is what i feel as a sales leader or as your boss you can you can work on these areas so there has to be a constructive feedback not just a negative or a meaningless uh, kind of a uh, feedback so i think uh, it's become more and more uh, clear that we are living in a vuka increasingly vuka world and uh, that's that's a reality that's not going to go away that's it's a clear reality and what do you mean by vuka so vuka means a volatile uncertain complex and ambiguous and and what i can say is uh, in my first 10 years or 12 years of my career i haven't seen these kind of changes which people are seeing now so a lot of people who started their careers in the last 4 5 years the kind of changes they have seen in the environment they are going to be more resilient than all of us because right at the start of the careers they they seen very 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 tough times whereas uh, you know we saw relatively stable times in the beginning in the earlier parts of our career so this is going to be if something is not there today it will happen tomorrow so it's going to be increasingly volatile and we need to be mentally prepared and as sales leaders we need to mentally prepare our teams cushy times good times are not going to be there forever but we have to be prepared for that so the way to get started is to quit talking and begin doing so that's what i'm going to do now i've come to the end of my presentation so i'm going to quit talking and i'm going to urge all of you in the room that you should start you know doing and uh, basically have an action for bias uh, i have a bias for action sorry so thank you i just wanted to end the slide um, uh you know resonating uh, hope so you know basically winter after winter comes spring after darkness comes the dawn you know and there is light at the end of a tunnel so uh, let's not get uh, so gloomy let's not get so demoralized i think all of us are strong resilient sales people and i think uh, we should be able to overcome these tough times and i think we should be able to come uh, overcome even tougher times uh, in the future i think all uh, i just want to pay uh, tribute to all uh, people who work in nepal i have worked here i think i think it's a very very tough environment uh, operating environment and uh, you know i just want i just uh, uh, want to actually praise all the people uh, especially the sales force and the front line uh in nepal because i think they work in very very tough uh, conditions uh, tough operating environment far more vuka than india and other areas of southeast asia 
and I just want it's you know salute to all of you and hats off to all of you for the kind of work that you have been doing for your respective companies. I think uh, they should treasure and value you if they are not doing so already. That's it. Thank you so much, Mr. Bedi, for all that insightful session. We'll do the discussion, but we will take some questions from yeah. the floor. Um, we'll take three to four questions. So we'll take that one first. Thank you, uh, Mr. Bedi. So we are really privileged to have you in the session. Uh, I remember uh, some years back, you were in Nepal. Uh, there was a big problem in the juice. You know, some foreign stuff uh, was found and, you know, the way it was portrayed. Uh, how did you deal with that uh, situation? You know, because I believe Dabur's core business is juices. So how did you deal with, this, uh, with that situation? And how did you come up at this current situation? Thank you. Uh, yeah, we had a problem a uh, couple of years back, I don't want to go into really uh, what led to that. Uh, but um, you, you see, um, essentially, uh, if you are selling good, credible products, you can't eventually keep them down for the, you know, in the long run. Eventually, quality does speak for ourselves. But I think at that time, what we essentially did, we, you know, took a number of measures essentially to basically re-establish the quality of our products, re-establish the superiority of the products, and basically re-establish the credibility of our products. So I think we had done, uh, we had, uh, we had done a couple of advertisements using some uh, celebrity influences from different walks of life who talked about the credibility of our products, people who used to use our products from uh, uh, different fields, we did that. Uh, we, I think, ran an advertisement uh, wherein we showcased the entire production process uh, in the factory, I think, using Rajesh Shamal. So we had a full TVC where we showed end-to-end -end production in our factory so that people could get an idea of our uh, automated lines, of uh, uh, a very modern kind of a facility uh, with high level of quality consciousness. So we used a couple of these kind of approaches, but essentially it is, uh, you can't uh, shy away, you have, to talk to your, you have to talk to your core target audience, and you have to continue to basically assure them uh, that uh, they have been receiving quality products in the past and they will continue to do so. So you use different mediums and uh, different strategies, but the whole core essence is to assure your, your, your target audience and your core customers. That is it. Thank you so much uh, for the answer and we'd like to move ahead with the next question. Um, I'd also like to encourage some questions from behind the hall as well, if there is any. Sir. Uh, like in your presentation, you pointed out that uh, uh, I'm talking in terms of honey, honey market, the local brands are taking. Actually, the local brands, what they are doing is they are uh, using gorilla strategy. They're looking, okay. Yeah, yeah, exactly, gorilla strategy. Because uh, uh, the thing is the approach is same, but you get different uh, challenges when you... Uh, talk in terms of east eastern market or when you terms of talk in terms of western market or Kathmandu market or the rai market you have different different things but uh, how you, how have you approached or what uh, can you share that so that because we are also facing something like that uh, what uh, uh, yeah you're right uh, see with a lot of um, organizations like us uh, we have a you know, we have a standard operating kind of a procedure. And uh, obviously, we ha if you want to be in these situations, in these times, you have to be more nimble and agile. You have to understand that, uh, you know, the different nuances of different markets. West does not behave like East, and East does not behave like Central. So different markets have different nuances, and different products sell in uh, different markets. So I'll just, I'll just give you an example. Uh, you know, hair oils, we sell hair oils. Um, and um, we realized that uh, our flagship brand, Amla, was struggling in, in East, in certain markets in East, basically Janakpur, Birganj, in those markets. And that's a major chunk 
of uh, those markets. So, so what we understood was that our flagship Amla is um, is uh, getting uh, impacted. Why is it getting impacted? Because consumers are finding it costly. So, what we did there was we introduced two new hair oils there. I mean, you wouldn't be aware of it because these are regional brands. Something called Badam Amla and something called Sarso Amla. So, so, so those products you will generally not find all across Nepal, but you will find it in these two geographies. So again, um, uh, in coconut, again we see it's a big coconut oil market in, uh, in uh, this area, Lahan, Janakpur, Birgan, that side. It's a big coconut oil market where Parachute for Marico is a very, very big brand. And we are not able to compete with them. But again, we see that there is an opportunity in this market. So we sell our coconut oil only in that market because there's an opportunity. Margins are low, but there's an opportunity. So we don't sell it right across. So I think, I think uh, that's how uh, we plan. Uh, our shampoo sachets sell more in the West. West is a slightly poorer part of Nepal uh, in terms of uh, uh, rest of Nepal. So we see our sachets sell much better in West. So we have most, we, our strategies are geared towards driving sales there. We do not sell it in rest of the thing. So, so you basically see, understand the different nuances of, uh, understand the nuances of different markets and tailor make your strategies. Uh, that's how we, that's how we look at it. I hope you got the answer of how it should be tailored approach and also based on geography or whatever the need of um, the customer is and we'd like to move ahead with the next question. Good afternoon, sir. Thank you for such an uh, insightful presentation. I'm Amit from Surya Nepal. So in one of the presentation uh, slide, you have mentioned about you know minimizing the cost during this crunch time. How much fair do you think uh, is to minimize the cost you know, uh, from the company's perspective, when the distributor you are working on, you know, working with, is also under the Sunday infl inflation, and inflation hit is hitting every di uh, distributors or companies. So, for instance, if the you are working, uh, you are talking about uh, minimizing the distribution cost, and equally, you want from distributor, to, you know, to expand the distribution and to you know gather the unreachable sales, and which is fair. So, how much uh, fair do you think, uh, you know? is to just uh, work on minimizing costs without understanding, you know, uh, from distribution perspectives. Uh, see, see, costs, you have to look at, uh, you have to look at costs in two buckets, essentially. One is your, your very core basic, you know, costs, which, and the non-essential costs. Again, you need to look at that. Basically, you have to cut the flab in your non-essential costs, largely. And, and secondly, you have to understand that uh, in these tough times, it is the onus on everybody. You know, organizations can't cut costs. If organizations have to cut costs to survive, so does your distributor, so does your retailer, and uh, so does um, uh, down the level. People have to cut costs to uh, you know, survive. And you need to understand what costs you can cut, what costs you can't cut. So that, that's, that understanding has to be there. Now, when it comes to, you are saying you have to cut costs. They, see, efficiency has to be there. Today, if you are not efficient as an organization, you will get weeded out. The market will weed you out. It's a matter of time. So the point is, yes, I agree that if you want increased coverage, if you want a certain uh, specialized sales initiatives, you might have to support the distributor in that. You might have to give him certain kind of subsidies till such time that that itself does not become, you know, sustainable. You, you'll have to do that. But then again, you have to be very, very clear that what costs you need to cut and what costs you don't need to cut. But what I'm trying to tell you today is that efficient firms will survive. Inefficiency will get hit, will get, uh, you know, will not be rewarded. Inefficient firms will get weeded out. It's very simple. It's survival of the fittest, survival of the people who are able to adjust and adapt. Thank but you. But everybody, what I'm saying is everybody, which we need to tell our distributors also, everybody will have to uh, cut costs. Your distributor cannot have extra costs, and then he comes and tells you that I am not making adequate ROI. 
he also has to ensure costs are in line. Then he can come and tell you, I have cut all my costs. I am not making proper ROI. Then please help me. But, uh, you know, with frivolous costs, he can't come to an organization and say, oh, help me. I am not making ROI. So everybody has to tighten their belts. That's what I feel. Uh, excuse me. Uh, can I uh, ask one question, please? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, my name is Raj Rimal. I represent uh, Sekhar Insurance Company. Uh, in your uh, presentation, you have, uh, you know, very uh, specifically mentioned about the economic downturn that we are currently undergoing, right? And uh, you also have several measures in place, what do's and don'ts, which have is internal, you know, reforms, things and, and all. So what really are the critical points or, you know, pre warning signals, I would say, where the current economy is going through? And what, what are the few takeaways from us that we need to you know, adopt to our uh, uh, you know, in internal workplace in order to uh, have some mitigating, mitigating measures in order to you know, uh, be safe and uh, you know, work out on some safeguarding measures and all. So what really are the critical uh, concerning areas that currently our country is going through? I'm asking you especially because you are a global company, you have your internal you know, you know, assessments of the regions. So, uh, what what would be the areas of concerns and and the areas of mitigating measures that we need to adopt immediately? See, the first area of uh, concern is low GDP. If if um, the basic economy is not growing. How do you expect growth for your own goods and services? It's very, very difficult. So the first question is, your GDP is not growing. So that, that is a major cause of concern. Nepal is a country with a low base. And generally, we in soils know where there is a low base, the quantum and opportunity for growth is higher. Countries with very, very high basic GDP find it difficult. So if India can grow at 5 to 6% with that size of GDP, uh, Nepal growing at 2% is a major cause of concern because the GDP is small and the headroom for growth is high. So slowing GDP is the first sign that trouble is on the way. So number one. Number two is inflation. Inflation at 75 to 8%, which is the NRB inflation, which a lot of people say the real-time inflation is even higher. So 8 to 99% inflation, you know, how is a consumer going to consume? I mean, he is going to cut back. So again, if you are in, as I mentioned, if you are in discretionary categories, you are going to be in for a very, very tough ride. Because people will purchase, postpone their purchase. You know, a lot of discretionary categories are linked with uh, interest rates. You must understand if I want to buy a car or if I want to buy a big TV, I need to borrow money. When you go to borrow money, the interest rates are very, very high. So, you know, and it's not easy to get loans. So, again, that's another problem. So, all this is basically coming down to one thing. It is consumption is slowing down. If the government revenues fall down, how is the government going to be able to invest in the country? Again, so that's, again, a big, big problem because government revenues are required to pay the government salaries, required for development, required for this. And then last, as I was telling you, is FDI not coming in. FDI comes in, jobs come, they create jobs, they create employment. So, so the whole, this, it's a big spiral, actually. That's what um, we are seeing. So all this is basically leading down to consumption slowdown, less money in the pockets of the consumers. So I think organizations in this time who basically can give more and more value to both the consumers or who can give value to the trade will survive. Because people should see value proposition in your offerings, then only he will take out money from your pocket to basically uh, to give you. So more and more value you create uh, for the ecosystem, whether it's the dealer, whether it is the consumer, you will uh, survive. But uh, if the value proposition is not there in tough times, uh, it's going to be different. 
So as an organization also, though we are sales people at organizations also, we must understand we have to rejig our portfolio. We have to constantly get products which are going to resonate with the consumers. If I sell very, very, you know, uh, high cost products, I need to have some lower variants, some cheaper variants. I need to be agile. Otherwise, it will become uh, very different because we are also seeing in our business huge amount of down trading happening. We see shampoo sachets selling much faster than shampoo bottles. So you can see that there is a stress in the system. So give more value to your consumers, give more value to your channel partners. At the same time, tighten your belts, remove uh, unnecessary cost. And uh, I think, I think uh, broadly, this is how uh, you will be able to uh, come through these tough times. But uh, we can't be frivolous in spending now at all. That's it. Sure. Thank you so much. A huge round of applause for Mr. Baby. Well, as I mentioned how insightful his session was, um, for now I'd like to invite Mr. Mohan Oja, Chairperson Sales Summit Steering Committee, to please be on stage as we um, appreciate and definitely say for this important co uh, keynote speech. Thank you so much, Mr. Bedi. Uh, and we'd like to move forward with the token of appreciation. Thank you so much for being a part of this and for your valuable time. As he mentioned of how there is changes in time and as there is changes in time. Thank you so much one more time. One more thing is, uh, uh, what I uh, forgot to mention was migration is at an all-time high. People going out for jobs is at an all-time high. So that also basically shows the kind of, you know, hopelessness. Uh, you know, why do people migrate when they, do, when they are seeing that the situation on the ground is not conducive to pursue their dreams? So uh, migration is an all-time high. So that also shows that, you know, there is a genuine stress in the system. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you both of you. And I'd like to request you to please be seated. As he mentioned about value proposition, I think that is one context we need to always remember. And different contexts, my dosto context sir, teste related geography ko kura gornu boyo, atwa need ko kura gornu boyo. It's not just based on geography, but it's based on overall what is needed and what we give. Bani halke uta perspective se rag dinu boyo kama. Thank you so much. And also, uh, as he mentioned, in these difficult times, I really liked how he provided the recrafting sales strategy. It was very clear and, uh, and very concise as well. And lovely presentation. I really like the visual as well. Tarawali Bonobas, the motivated team, growth mindset, resilience and perseverance, agile, abakosari tado act karne, ki gornu parda raisa, nitio pre planning later, the rekura estimate karda raisa, kosto bairasa, kosto bathaina, and how we adapt to it is so important. So I think it was. A chunk of everything Dun Kurale Hamilai Oile ko your present situation represent theme sang a relative sape keynote um, he presented in a very beautiful way. So thank you so much, Mr. Bedi, one more time. And now uh, we have a lunch 